to win actually seem to get you good results. The reason Netscape is important is that they were the first large company to participate in open source. We had Cygnus providing support, but we didn't really have much business. And Netscape went open source essentially as a way to fight Microsoft, which was giving away Internet Explorer, but not letting anyone else have the source code, not letting companies collaborate. Working as part of the Salesforce, I got a good, I got a good idea of why people bought our software and what it took to make our software successful in the marketplace against competitive products. However, the problem was, we were saying, is that, is that as time went on, our software was uh, being competed against by other people's software, particularly Microsoft's. And as time went on, the price of our software had to drop because other people were giving their software away at, at no charge or at, or at little charge. Now, the real problem was that they feared that Microsoft would achieve a monopoly lock on the browser market, and they would then use that monopoly lock to uh, pervert, actually, the HTTP and HTML standards that the web depends on. And once they had uh, turned those standards into lock-in devices, they could then use that control to drive Netscape out of the server market, which is where it was making its real money. My concern was that as time went on, Netscape's business would be threatened by the fact that we didn't have enough people to do all the things we needed to do as a company in order to keep our software viable in the marketplace. The Netscape release happened in early 1998. And uh, I was told later, I had no idea at the time, that it came about as a direct result of the right people having read The Cathedral and the Bazaar. The Cathedral and the Bazaar, the paper by Eric Raymond, was in a significant influence on Netscape's decision to release source code. came as a complete shock to me. I wasn't really ready for the thought that I was changing the world, even by accident. However, it was not by any means the only influence on that decision, uh, and not necessarily the most important one when, when all is said and done. Uh, as I said, Netscape, Netscape had already been talking about releasing source code for quite some time before anybody had ever heard of Eric's paper. Linux Congress in early 1997, which was the first place that I gave that paper. And one of the people who heard it was Tim O'Reilly of O'Reilly Associates. And uh, he thought it was pretty intriguing. And he asked me to give it at his first Pearl conference, which was uh, later that year in fall of 97. And apparently what happened, I was told later, although I had no idea this was happening at the time, uh, is that some people from Netscape actually heard the, the, the paper at the Pearl Conference and took those ideas back to Netscape and they kind of lit a fire there. The role of my paper was essentially to make the internal case at Netscape, uh, to make the business case for why Netscape should release its source code. The paper was called Netscape Source Code as Netscape Product. Um, a strange title, essentially the, the, what the title meant was that in my opinion, we, we needed to, to think of source code not just as something that was used in creating our products, but as something that was a product in its own right, something that customers might use, other people might use. I then looked at what the business models might be if we release source code for our products. How would we license them? How do we, how do we uh, sell products in this environment? Um, then I looked at the competition, uh, particularly Microsoft. Uh, what would they be likely to do if we release source code? Was there some way they could use our source code against us? I used Eric's paper as an example of how distributed development could work, uh, how a company could develop software not just using their own people, but also working with people on the internet. Uh, and I, that's why I included a reference to Eric's paper in, in my paper. Once my paper was circulated, the people who read my paper would naturally enough find a reference to Eric's paper and, and read that as well. And who was involved in making that happen in Netscape? Primarily, the person who made the actual decision was Jim Barksdale. Uh, and this turned out to be important later, that our big win, the big score that gave us mainstream visibility and credibility with investors, came not because of bottom-up evangelism from a bunch of engineers, but because one strategist at the top saw the potential power of this method and then essentially imposed that vision on everyone underneath him. When I completed the paper, I first gave a copy to Mark Andreessen, who was co-founder of Netscape and was, was at the time one of, in the senior management team at Netscape. Mark then gave a copy of the paper to several other people within Netscape 
management, uh, including Jim Barksdale. I'm not sure exactly when Jim and the other senior managers uh, made the actual decision. Uh, I believe it was in early January sometime. Uh, Netscape actually announced uh, that it was going to release the source code on January 22nd, at the same time that they released that they were going to give Communicator away for free. When Netscape decided to release the source code, uh, people sort of got a wake-up notice that said, you know, hey, maybe there is something to this idea of releasing source code and doing development with people outside your company. Um, so Netscape's decision brought a lot of public attention to the idea of free software, what, you, what became known as open source, and brought a lot of attention to the Linux operating system, which was one of the most prominent examples of open source software at that time. This is our first office, Mountain View, California. We moved here in early 1995. This is 4,000 square feet. It was an incredible leap of faith for us to move out and take the company to our own office. Now, what's really important about this place is that this is the office where the term open source was invented. If you walk into an executive's office and you say, free software, OK, if you're lucky, the response you'll get is something like, hmm. Hmm. Uh, free software must be cheap, shoddy, worthless. Uh, and if you're not lucky, it has uh, associations with, uh, with the Free Software Foundation's wholesale attack on intellectual property rights, which regardless of what you think about the ethics of that, it's lousy marketing. It's not something that, that uh, businesses want to hear. So Eric Raymond knew that there was a problem. We've been calling this free software, but People took the term free and associated with free of charge. They thought that you couldn't make money or you couldn't sell, which is exactly the wrong concept. We wanted to get across the idea that the software was open and that the source code was available. Very important pieces. We had this meeting at the VA offices in Mountain View where Eric, myself, uh, and Christine Peterson from the Forsyth Institute joined us as well as several other people. Christine Peterson was there by phone. Um... Uh, John Mad Dog Hall was also there by phone. Um, a guy named Todd Anderson, who later worked for SUSE for a while, was there. Sam Ackman, who now runs Penguin Computing, was there. He was, uh, he was an employee of, of a VA at the time. Well, we came up with the concept of open source. We called Linus, in fact, and asked Linus if he liked it. He was interested. He liked it. Eventually, we came up with something that replaced free software. So that was the beginning choose, of open source. How did you choose the words open source? Do you remember? You know, I think Christine Peterson was the person who really came up with the idea. Uh, we wanted, again, the idea that the source code was out there and uh, it was open. There weren't many choices. <clears throat> well, since the first three recipients have spoken for the open source movement, I think I should speak about the free software movement. The open source movement focuses on practical advantages that you can get by having a community of users who can cooperate on interchanging and improving software. I agree completely with the points they make about that. The reason why my views are different while I am in the free software movement rather than the open source movement is that I believe there's something more important at stake, that freedom to cooperate with other people, freedom to have a community is important for our quality of life. It's important for having a good society that we can live in. And that that is, in my view, even more important than having powerful and reliable software. But I think some of the people in the free software camp are a little scared by the commercialization. Um, and, you know, of course, a rebel is put off by success. Uh, I think that commercialization is very important. We want to mainstream this software. And I work with Richard Stallman, who's the gray-haired man of free software, uh, on a regular basis. And I don't feel I have any philosophical differences. Uh, me as author of the open source definition, and he is originator of free software uh, as an organized thing, uh, except for one thing. Richard wants all software to be free, and I think that free software and non-free software should coexist. That's the only difference we have. Uh, we decided early on that what we needed a, a, a definition. We needed a kind of meta license to define the ter term open source. And